Okay, so we've looked into sequences. Now we are going to learn about series. And series are basically sequences, but with addition. So for example, remember with sequences, we had a sequence of numbers like this, one, two, oops, sorry, zero, one, two, three, etc. For series, we are adding each of these numbers. So it's zero plus one, plus two, plus three, etc. So a series is going to have some numerical value, or it might not be a numerical value, it could be infinity, uh, that this list of numbers is going to equal to. So before we go into series though, uh, let me introduce you to a few uh, new notations. So the most basic notation associated with series is the summation notation. It's called, it's a capital sigma. And let me just write the notation first and then explain each of these parts. Where i goes from 1 until 3 of i. All right, so what does this mean? This means i is the index. And when we were talking about sequences, we talked about nth term. i is similar to that. So the index says this is the lower bound. So we start here, lower bound, and we end here. upper bound. And the index is going to go up by one. Okay, so i starts at one, so we have a one. i starts at one. And then after that it goes up by one, so the next is going to be two. And then next is going to be 3, but we're going to stop at 3 because the upper bound is 3. So this means we're going from when i equals 1 until when i equals 3. Okay, And this summation notation, this is called the summation notation, it tells us that we should add up all of these terms. We should add up all of these terms. So then this is going to equal 6. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. So this notation that we have on the left here is going to equal 6. Okay, some of you might be very confused right now. So let's try another example. Let's try another example here. I have the summation from when i equals 1 until 4 of, let's do 2i this time, 2i. Okay, so now that is going to equal, first is when i equals 1, when i equals 1. Okay, so when i equals 1, we have 2 times 1. And then when i equals 2, we have 2 times 2. i equals 3, we have 2 times 3. i equals 4, we have, running out of space here, 2 times 4. But we're going to stop at 4 because that's our upper bound. Okay, so we've gone from 1, 2, 3, and then 4. And then this summation notation tells us that we should add these. Okay, so now that is going to equal 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 2 times 4, which is 8, and that is going to equal 20. Okay, so this notation here tells us uh, that we should add from when i equals 1 all the way until when i equals 4. And this is the formula that we're using. Okay, so the answer would be 20 here. Let's do one more. The summation from when i equals 1 until 5 of i minus 1. 
Okay, so we'll start with when i equals 1. When i equals 1, it's going to be 1 minus 1. Plus, when i equals 2, it's going to be 2 minus 1. Plus, when i equals 3, it's going to be 3 minus 1. Plus, when i equals 4, it's going to be 4 minus 1. Oops, 4 minus 1 plus i equals 5 is going to be 5 minus 1. And we'll stop there because our upper bound is 5. So each of the terms between the addition sign should look something like this. It should look something like this before simplification. So we're subtracting i minus 1 in this case. Up here, each of the terms between the addition sign should look something like this. We are multiplying i times 2. And I've erased our first example here, but it was 1 plus 2 plus 3. Each of the terms between the addition sign should look something like this. In this case, it would just i. Okay, so down to our example. 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 minus 1 is 1. 3 minus 1 is 2, 4 minus 1 is 3, and 5 minus 1 is 4. And we just simply add these all together, and we should get 10. Okay, now there are a couple of special cases for the series. So let me do those examples here. The first one is the constant case constant case, in which case we have a summation where i goes from 1 to, say, 5. And there is no i here, so there's just a number, say just 3. What do you do in this case? Well, because there's no i, there's no variable here. There's nothing that's changing here. So when i equals 1, it's just going to be 3. There's no i here, so we can't really multiply or divide or add or subtract i to 3. This is when i equals 1. And then we're adding. When i equals 2, it's also going to be 3. When i equals 3, it's also going to be 3. i equals 4, it's also going to be 3. i equals 5, it's also going to be 3. So basically, we're just adding 3 5 times. right? And of course, that's going to equal 15. So this is the case when we just have a constant term here. There's no i here, so there's nothing that's changing. So the general formula for this, if we have a summation from i equals 1 to n of a constant, let's call the constant c, that is just going to equal n times c. We're adding c n times from when i equals 1 until when i equals n. If it's hard for you to see that, we're just adding c plus c plus c plus c n times. This is when i equals 1, i equals 2, i equals 3, all the way until when i equals n. Okay, so we're adding c n times. So this is our formula for finding the summation of a constant term. Now, there are a few more cases, special cases, where we can find a series of. Um, and we'll explore more on those on the next video.